Hey, what is going on guys? So I'm pretty fed up with gaming mechanical keyboards. I'm talking the traditional $200 to $150 gaming mechanical keyboards, which are relatively expensive in terms of what they offer for build quality and switch quality. And lately I've been looking for the best typing experience and the best sort of keyboard and smoothest switch that I can get. And the fact of the matter is, if you want that premium build quality, you're just gonna to have to build it yourself or pay an extreme amount for it. So today I'm gonna to show you how I took the AND Pro 2, swapped out the switches, uh, lubricated them up, and then basically created what I think is a really, really premium feeling keyboard for not that much money. So for example, one of the most popular keyboards on the market right now is the Corsair K75 Rapid Fire RGB keyboard. That keyboard goes for around $160 to $170 on Amazon and it's even a bestseller, so a lot of people have that keyboard. What I've built today really, I think, is a much better build quality, a much smoother switch. I really think that if you want a premium keyboard that is a premium feeling keyboard, you're better off building something like this instead of spending that much money on RGB and really a logo. And I really do believe in a premium typing experience. I believe that it does matter. Uh, for me, at least, I want you know a nice experience when I'm typing. Since I do interact with the keyboard throughout most hours of the day, and I know most of you guys do as well. So this is the AND Pro 2. It's a 60% wireless mechanical keyboard that has RGB as well. And I really think it makes for an awesome base if you want to do your own custom 60% keyboard project like I have here. Now with that 60% form factor, you do lose the function row, but you can interact with that with just the function button towards the bottom. You do lose the number pad as well, but you don't lose the arrow keys here, at least with the AND Pro. You can still access the arrow keys by just tapping the bottom right keys. That'll give you access to left, right, down, and up just by tapping them. For me, that's really important as an editor, especially when I'm doing some animations so it's great to have that here on the and pro you also get pbt double shot keycaps which feel nice and premium a really solid aluminium case that has a nice little angle to it and like i said you do get that rgb as well which does shine through the keycaps so really all things considered for 109 us dollars this is a really awesome keyboard but there is one thing that i don't like and the reason that i d wouldn't use it as my main keyboard and that is the switches i went with gateron brown switches thinking they'd be a Okay, but they feel extremely scratchy, you know, not smooth, not really nice to type on, and not really nice to game on either. I finally stumbled on the Telios V2 from Zeal PC. Now they're not a very popular switch, they're kind of what you would consider an exotic switch, and they're not very cheap for mechanical keyboard switches where they do come in over $1 per switch. That means that if you do wanna fit out the AND Pro 2 with all of these switches, it will land you at about $80 US, but the difference is absolutely worth it. So these are linear switches, just like the Cherry MX Reds, for example. But the big difference between these two switches are the Telios V2 are a lot smoother. They don't have any of those micro vibrations as you press down and top out the switch. They're a lot quieter and they also have a slightly heavier actuation as well. They do bottom out at 67 grams. That does help me quite a bit because I often do some accidental key presses when I'm gaming. So at over a dollar per switch, these are not considered cheap mechanical switches, but they are absolutely worth it. The final product that I've got here feels like absolute butter to type on. It kind of makes you want to make up excuses just to find something to type. It's kind of one of those things where you do have to sort of feel and experience it to uh, kind of get what I'm saying here. But having tried other linear switches on the market, these are just so much smoother and nicer to type on. The other thing I did, which actually made a world of difference, was to lubricate the switches. So to actually pull apart each switch, lubricate the interior walls and the stem, and it actually made the switch a lot quieter and a lot smoother too. All right, so now that you're familiar with the parts, let me show you how to do this if you do wanna go down the same path and do this with the AND Pro 2. So the first step is kind of optional and it really depends on what kind of switches you go 
with, but I would highly recommend lubricating your switches. The Telios V2, like I said, are already extremely smooth, so they don't really require lubrication, but it can help improve the feel a bit more. And for those who really do care about a premium feeling keyboard, it is worth doing. So I'm by no means an expert when it comes to lubricating switches. This is the first time I've done it, but the lubricant here that I'm using is Tribosis 3204. It cost me around $7 for about two mils, and that was plenty for the N Pro 2. Now to actually lubricate the switch and get in there, you'll actually have to dismantle every single switch, and you can do this quite easily with a small flathead screwdriver. There'll be two little slots on two edges of the key switch. Just pop it open and then carefully disassemble the switch. So this will reveal the key switch construction, which consists of the bottom housing, the spring, the stem, and the top housing. So to lubricate this switch, I've lubricated the bottom housing where the stem makes contact with it. So in this case, it's both of the interior channels and also a little bit on the leaf as well. One small tip that I can give here is to apply a very light coat. You definitely don't want to be soaking this thing with a heavy coat of lubricant. The goal here is just to reduce the plastic on plastic friction that you have with the stem and the two housings. Once you're done with the bottom housing, you'll also want to apply a little bit on the bottom of the spring just so it sticks onto the bottom housing easier, and then go on to lubricate each four sides of the stem. If you're using a tactile switch, it is recommended not to lubricate the front of the stem as this can affect the tactility of the switch itself. Once you're done with that, just assemble the switch, put it back together, and then repeat for the 60 other switches. So yeah, this can be a bit time consuming, but it is definitely worth it in the end. And it is kind of therapeutic, just put aside about an hour. All right, so once the switches are all prepared and ready, we do need to desolder the original and pro. So if you're not familiar with soldering, I would recommend looking up a few tutorials online just to know what you're dealing with. Pulling apart the and pro is pretty easy, just use a key switch puller to get the key caps off. And then you've got five screws to disassemble the base from the PCB. So in terms of desoldering the Ampro 2, you've got two legs for each switch that you need to worry about. And you can do this two ways. You can use a solder wick, but I would recommend using a solder vacuum pump, which is just a handheld little tool. Just heat up each pad and then suck it up with the pump. One word of caution here though, it is messy, so make sure you have a bin or paper towel nearby. This also will take about 30 to 40 minutes. Once you're done there, basically just pop the switches out and you're ready for some new switches. Popping the switches in is pretty self-explanatory, just sort of pop them in the same way they came out and soldering the pins shouldn't be too hard either. Overall, this shouldn't take more than about 10 or 15 minutes, but do take your time, do not rush. Also, do make sure all of the switch housings are flush with the PCB and they're not elevated from it. Otherwise, you will get uneven keycaps like I do here. Then if you've got a new set of keycaps, you can pop those on now. The ones that I've got here are also double shot, just like the original and pro keycaps. Also, the RGB illumination happens to look a little bit better on these keycaps as well because there is a bit more spacing between the actual keys, although there is no illumination for the text, but that's fine by me. So that's how you take the N Pro 2 and really make it a really premium keyboard for not that much money. As I was saying in the beginning, some of these keyboards that are full sized, even $160 to $170, Honestly, just get yourself the Ampro 2 for 109 bucks, get some premium key switches for about another 70, install them yourself and you have a really premium keyboard. The typing experience and feel of this is going to far exceed anything that you can get from even a Ducky or any Corsair keyboard out there that use standard Cherry MX switches. And just to clarify, nothing against those brands. Gaming keyboards definitely have a place in the market. There's one reason why they're so popular in the first place, but if you're like me and you don't really want to settle for that in terms of a premium typing experience, here's how you can easily take the N Pro 2 and customize it to build something extremely premium, something that you would otherwise have to pay someone three or $400 to build for you. One other thing I'll mention is that if you are planning on doing this with the N Pro 2, that is taking the base and then swapping out the switches, I would recommend going for, you know, doing a bit of research and looking for an exotic switch like the Telios V2. There really is no point in taking the Gatoron Browns, for example, and just swapping it to Cherry MX Browns or Cherry MX Blues. There's plenty of keyboards on the market that you can already get with those switches in it. I honestly don't think I can go back to traditional gaming keyboards after using this, that's for sure. So as always guys, if you want to do this project, I'll leave some links down below in the description if you're interested. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.